After rotating a distance d, we get a complex uh, input impedance. Eta b is complex. And eta b takes into account everything to the right. Does this mean that the electric and magnetic fields are out of phase in material 1 to the left of interface b? The electric and the magnetic fields of individual waves are in phase in all three materials because eta 1, eta 2, and eta 3 are all real numbers. The phase difference between the electric and man magnetic fields of a wave depends only on the intrinsic impedance of the material it is propagating in. However, since the input impedance is complex at interface B, there is a phase difference between the total electric field and the total magnetic field. Total fields after summing together all the incident and the reflected waves at interface B. So in other words, the ratio of the electric field of a single wave in material 1 to the magnetic field of that wave is eta 3 here, E over H is eta 1, and E over H here is eta 2, if I'm ignoring the directions of E and H. But the ratio of the total electric field of all the incident and the reflected waves combined to the total magnetic field of all the incident and reflected waves is eta in. This is analogous to the ratio of the voltage of a single wave propagating on a transmission line to the current of that wave. So in other words, we're comparing here eta in with z in versus eta 1, 2, or 3 for the different materials, and z naught of the transmission line. In other words, if eta in is a real number at a specific point in space, then the total electric and the total magnetic fields are in phase at that position. If you get a complex number for eta in, then they're going to be the total E and total H fields are going to be out of phase at that position. Now let's consider an example similar to the last one, but in this case, the, the material is going to be lossy. The slab material number two is going to be lossy. So we have a table again with values here. Sigma and alpha are no longer zero in material two. You can see that here. So in part A, we're going to calculate the input impedance at Z equals minus D again.